Chef Buck here and today we're going to cook up a canned mackerel fish stew. This is going to be a real time cooking video. The idea is that it's going to be in real time so I don't have anything ready. I don't have anything prepped so you know when you walk into your kitchen this is about how long it's going to take. Maybe. But I got my can of mackerel already out and I'm going to use a pot and I'm in my mother-in-law's kitchen and she's got this pot so I'll use this which I don't know if it's ideal because it's kind of big on the bottom but let me get my stove going I'm going to cook it on medium high to get it started let's see so I got my pot on there and I'm going to put a little bit of oil in here because we're going to get our onions going first and I'm on the tail end of this here. This is just a little bit of a coconut oil, but use whatever kind of oil you like. So I killed that one. And I'll use a little safflower oil to fill it up. But get in there and see how much that is, camera girl. That's not a whole lot. Just enough to get the uh, bottom covered because I'm going to saute some onions up. Boom, boom. Let me get out a couple of cutting boards. I don't like the surface of this counter color wise, so I like to put this cutting board down to put my other cutting board on there so that it'll show up a little bit better. You know, that's, that's, some, that's some videography stuff. You don't need to know that for a, really? a cooking video. Really? I got the dirty, uh, looks like a dirty huh? cutting board. Dirty cutting board. This cutting board has personality. That's not dirty. That's that's personality. Okay. All right, but we'll we'll turn most of the personality down. <laughs> okay, what else do I want? There, there's not a lot of fresh ingredients that go into this uh, mackerel. Come on over here, camera girl. You got to follow me with the camera because this is real time. I got nothing. You just can't show the the can. The can's not that exciting. So we got some celery and some parsley. So I got parsley. Well, this is going to be for color because this really makes the dish look nice. If I didn't have parsley, then I'd pull out this green onion and use a little bit of that. Or spinach adds a nice color as well. But, uh, let's see. I'm going to need a lime. I don't think I'm going to need the whole lime. Like I said, the first thing we're going to do is the onion. This is, yeah, that's bits and bobble of onion. So I'm going to use up this little bit of onion and one other whole onion. So you just use your foot like that to close the fridge. But uh, you don't have to make it look as graceful as I just made it look. Alrighty. Now you're just, oh, you're focusing on, okay, okay, I don't know. Camera girl's throwing me off with her camera uh, technique. But this is going to be an unedited video, which I said I did last time, but there are a few edits that you know some people pointed out but there are going to be little edits here and there because uh, the battery might have to be changed sometimes the camera overheats and cuts off but usually that won't happen more than once move along but no I'm, I'm trying I'm, I'm trying to explain something because I just smashed some drawers shut so I'm going to try the best I can uh, to cut out any overly obnoxious sounds but there might be a few but that's just what you have to deal with. Whoops! I forgot about having my oil on. Instead of talking, I thought I had my onion sliced by now. But let's see, let me cut something up so I got something in my pot going. I'm gonna chop up my bits and bobbles of onion. And you can cut it into some smaller sizes. It doesn't have to be overly large. And this is just some leftover onion from another dish I had, but it's not enough uh, for this recipe. For this recipe, really I need about one large onion. I'm going to make, usually I make twice as much of this stew as I'm gonna to make today. So usually I would put two whole onions in this dish. I'm going to uh, link this video. There'll be a link down below that'll take you over to myfoodchannel.com and it'll be the fish stew recipe over there. And if you go over there and see that recipe and follow that recipe, it'll be a delicious stew just like this one. Although there might be some slight differences in it. 
because I won't do it exactly like that, I'm sure. Let's see. I don't like to use your mom's wooden spoons. I'd rather use my own wooden spoon. Boom, boom, boom. So we got an onion started there. Let me cut up this big onion here. Boom, boom, boom. I don't have uh, my refuse bag out. I need to grab that. Oh, no, no, no. I, oh, do I want that? Yeah, okay, go ahead. That's unattractive. Thank you, camera girl. Uh, my mother-in-law likes to compost. So we put everything in this very unattractive looking thing that we got hanging around here. Let me get this onion whacked up a doodle. And you can cut up your onion any which way you like. And as I said in my previous uh, real-time video, and I'm going to say it in this video too because it applies, is that all of your bits and bobbles don't have to be the exact size. You know, if it's not exactly uniform, that's going to be fine. Especially when it comes to the onion. Because that's going to cook with plenty of time. I feel like I'm rushing. I feel like I'm way behind on my oil. Boom, boom, boom. Do you have that oil going? So we've got one onion right there to add to our other bit of onion. Looks like about a cup and a half. Uh, yeah, maybe. It's a lot. But I'm going to add some potato to this recipe, which I normally don't do. But I've still got a potato I need to get rid of. So while my onion is going, I'll go ahead and get my potato uh, chopped up. Now get over here on the floor. Now see, uh, if you were doing this in your own home and you drop some onion like that, you could just pick it up and get it out of the way. But since we're doing a video, we'll just take our, our shoe oh. and we'll just push it under the counter no, until no. later. And hopefully we won't forget about it. Now I'm gonna chop up my potato right here Let's see, and I'm going to do one half of my potato in these kind of bigger sizes right here. They're not huge sizes, but I'm going to do my other potato in smaller sizes. So I'll have two different sizes of potato that I'm going to throw in this pan. Boom, boom, boom. And that'll be okay because it's definitely going to cook long enough. And some of these smaller pieces of potato you know, if they, if they dissolve, if they fall apart, you know, that's going to be a good thing because it'll make the dish a little creamier. And if I've got my stove on a little bit too high, that's okay. But now we've got a nice little base of ingredients going right here. So I can catch my breath and chop up my celery a little bit. What? No garlic? Uh, nah, I usually don't put garlic in this dish. I don't think. I mean, garlic wouldn't hurt, but I don't think it's necessary because we're gonna have, we're gonna have a lot of flavor in here already. But, but this here celery is kind of key to this dish. Like that potato, I don't normally put that potato in here, but you can accent uh, the stew any which way you like. But the celery, is fantastic in this dish. I wouldn't make this dish if I didn't have the celery because no matter how long the celery cooks it's still got a great texture and it's fantastic for this mackerel stew. Just that little bit of celery texture. Seems like it'll always have a little bit of a crunch because we're not gonna we're not gonna cook this dish for all that long. Even though it's a stew it's not gonna stew that much. Although it'd be fine if it did. Let's see. I'm going to throw a couple more pieces of celery in here. Just because I've been talking up the celery. So I might as well take advantage of it. And this celery is getting a little long in the tooth, so we got to use it up. Boom, boom, boom. Now I'm going to throw a little bit of seasoning in here. 
Yeah, I still got it on medium high. I'm gonna go simple on the seasoning. What do I got? I got some. What you focusing on down there? What, what are you looking for? Are you looking for what I shoved under the hoopty? Okay, I'm gonna put some cracked black pepper. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to throw in some some red pepper flakes. I really like a little bit of heat with this dish. Is that a lot? Yes. Um, what about that? Is that okay? See. That'll be all right. Actually, I'm going to do a little bit more. Surprise. Yeah. Well, you know, we got to be mindful of uh, Camera Girl's mother. She's not going to be happy about those chili flakes. But that's really not a lot. Yeah, forget about us. That's not a lot at all. Um, so to make up for that not being a lot. Oh, your mother's got this, um, this chipotle. Uh, and chipotle is jalapeno. Uh, that has been smoked. It's smoked jalapenos. So this is a uh, chipotle powder. Can I use up the rest of that in there, you think? That's not going to be too hot. It's actually... Oh. What? No, no! It, it was everything. It, there wasn't that much left in the jar. Look, look down there. Hey, yeah, That's yeah. not that much. You got to trust me. I mean, I... Chef Buck, Chef Buck, Chef Buck. I didn't want to put it back uh, with just a little smidgen in there. But the thing is, we're going to be adding tomato to this recipe and tomato will really mellow out uh, that seasoning all right speaking of tomato come on over here camera girl let's see what we got over here now for this recipe I like to use tomato paste and usually you know I'll have um, a double recipe I usually use two cans of mackerel for this dish but I'm just gonna use one today uh, and then I would use sometimes this whole can or, you know, maybe a half or, or three quarters of this can. Because this tomato paste adds a nice creamy luxuriousness to the stew. But since I'm making a half recipe, I don't want to open this tomato paste. I don't have hey, a plan hey, for it. Your mother-in-law has tablespoons of tomato paste in the freezer for just that huh, reason. Does she? Yes. Oh, well, I've already decided I'm going to use one can of tomato sauce. I didn't know that she had uh, smaller things of tomato paste, but... You so we'll just add some of that for cream. You can uh, make it thicker. Oh, but I've got the potato. So my, my, my thinking is the, the potato is going to make it a little creamier anyway. Boom, boom, boom. So that's stirring away. Let me open up these cans. Come on over here, camera girl. Turn around. Get away from that and come over here to where the action is. So I can open up this here. I'll open up just to have this opened up. And then I'll open up this mackerel. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see. You know what, this is going long enough on its own. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it up to high. And then I'll go ahead and add in a little bit of broth. Now this is some chicken broth. Uh, that your mom had in the fridge and I uh, pulled this out so it would thaw earlier uh, but you could just use usually I use just like a can of broth or we have some pre-mixed broth that we buy at the store but we didn't have any so this is actual chicken broth that your mom uh, made from a chicken dish or saved from a chicken dish she had so I'm going to throw in this broth and I'm going to go ahead and throw in this tomato sauce Boom, 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 and hopefully that's not going to be too wet. But I've got it on high heat. And I'll get it stirred up. And then we'll throw a lid on here so it'll come up to a boil a little bit faster. Oops, you know what I haven't added that I do want to add before I bring it up to a boil? Excuse me, camera girl. Turn around here. I'm not, I'm not being a very good subject. So I'm going to throw in some salt, so I have some seasoning going there. What that's, happened to the pink Himalayan? That's way too much. Oh, that's in our that's in our little kit. I'm just. Say, that was too much salt. Uh, not really, because we got a lot of tomato in there. That's true. And we got that potato in there, and we yeah. got all that onion in you gotta there. Gotta trust that chef bug. You know, but maybe it is. You know, we'll do a taste test later, and maybe that'll be all the salt that we add in here. But we'll see. Let's see, I feel really discombobulated in this kitchen. 
All right, so I got it covered and we'll bring that to a boil. Now come around over here, camera girl. I promised I was gonna open this uh, mackerel. So I'll go ahead and do that. And what's the time on the camera? 16 minutes. Uh, okay, well, wow, that's longer than I thought it was. But I'm, I would normally drain this off in the sink, but I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into a bowl so you can see the true horror of what we're getting into. Mmm, smells like the sea. Why is that hard? Uh, because, look at that. It's fish. <laughs> I know it's fish, but people are going to think that's pretty horrifying. Really? Uh, but it's just little segments of fish, boom, 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 that they've lopped off and thrown into a can, and then they cook it, then they treat the can, uh, so it's cooked inside the can. So these bones are soft, you know, all the bones will just fall apart. You know, the flesh of this fish, it's all cooked. You could take it right out of the can and eat it just like this here. You know, if you were like a, a prepper, you know, and you wanted to practice, you know, for days when you're going to have to do that in the future, then you could do that there. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to stew it up. So go ahead and get a good close-up shot of that so people can uh, see what they're in store for. And mackerel is inexpensive. It's one of the uh, best uh, canned fish buys uh, that there is. And it is a very nutritious, and it can be a delicious fish. It's super delicious in this stew. Let's see, but I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the yucky yuck right there. And then I will give it a little squishy squish here. Boom, boom, boom. And then that's it. Now our fish, oops. Let me turn off the water before I continue. And then that's it. Our fish is ready to go into the stew pot at some point. Let's come on over here and see what we got going. It's boiling up there, so I'll turn it down to medium. And I'll give it a stir. We're just going to let it bubble away here. And I'm going to go ahead and get my lemon juice. Oh, excuse me, camera girl. Boom, boom, boom. Got my lemonizer and my lemon. And I said that celery is kind of key for this dish, but lemon is as well. You definitely want lemon for this mackerel stew. And I got a whole lemon here. Because as the years go by, I like more and more lemon in this dish. Let me see, I'll go ahead and get some zest, but not a lot of zest. I'll just zest a wee little bit of this. And this is a handy dandy tool to have right here, this little zester. Now, if you don't have a zester, you can just shave off a little bit off the lemon and chop it up, but you, you just want to, to take the outer skin. You don't want to get into the white. Is that called the pith? I don't know, but it uh, can be bitter. So you just want the outer skin. We'll just mince up a little bit of this here to go into the stew in a wee little bit. Let's take a look over this camera, girl. See it's simmering. I'll raise the temperature back up to medium so that it doesn't completely uh, become at ease. You know, we want to keep a, the stew on its toes. Keep it dancing the entire time. So now it's just doing a slow waltz, and we'll come back over here and continue with our lemonade. Boom. And I went ahead and rolled this before I started squeezing it. If you roll the lemon around a little bit and maybe do a Dusty Rhodes action on there, you know, show it who's boss with a couple of left hooks or right hooks, depending on which side of the camera you're looking on, then it'll help the juice come out of your, uh, your lemon a little easier. Now, Camera Girl noted in a, the previous video that I actually, I turned the, uh, the thing instead of the lemon because I think outside the box. That's the reason. <laughs> That's it. I thought that's how it worked. Any fool can turn the lemon. 
But only a genius would turn the lemon thingamabob. Genius. That's it. I'm calling myself a genius. Let me dig my uh, my seeds out of here. Because I don't want any of those to end up in the stew. Because we don't want our stew to turn into a trip to the dentist. Your teeth are that brittle? That's it. Well, you know, I eat with such vigor. Let's see, what was I doing the other day? Oh, prunes. Man, I eat a lot of prunes, but boy, you gotta you gotta be careful, you know, navigating yourself around a pitted, so-called pitted prune. You know, because they put a little disclaimer on the side of the prune, just because. I don't know how many people every year have to go to the dentist chowing down on pitted prunes. Well, if you don't put six in your mouth at one time, you might feel it a little easier. You're supposed to eat them six in your mouth at one time. Everybody knows that. How else are you going to stay regular? All right. Well, I got my seeds out of there. Come on over here, camera girl. Let me give a taste test on this here so I can see what kind of salt damage I have done. I know this is a lot of dead air, but I gotta take my time here. Yeah, don't burn your time. Mm, I'm not gonna kill my taste buds before dinner. Mmm, definitely not too much salt. Definitely not. Woohoo! Chef Buck rides again. Yeah, but it's enough. I'm not gonna add any more to this here. Although I am tasting that pepper a little bit, so I don't know how. Well, duh. I don't know how thrilled your mom's gonna be with this here. So. We've got this pretty much done. Let me try, let me taste one of these big pieces of potato so I can see, um, make sure that this is done. But even if it's not done, it'll be done by the time. The dish simmers for a few more minutes. Mm hmm that's right. It's a little bit firm, but it's definitely edible. Boom, boom, boom. So now I'm going to throw my fish in here and this dish is pretty much done. You know, you don't want to put your fish in until your stew, until your uh, potato and tomato and onions and everything is cooked through because the fish goes in almost at the very last. We'll stir that around. And like I said, normally, you know, I would have about twice as much as this. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my heat off. I don't need this on anymore because this pot, I mean, this stuff is already boiling hot. And like I said, the fish is already cooked. So it's not like the fish has to cook. But even if you were using fresh fish instead of mackerel, you could do this exact same recipe and just use fresh fish. And then you still want to add your fish in at the end. If that was raw fish, you know, it would already cook, you know, in this hot pot. You know, it's still simmering away, bubbling away. So even then it would still cook. But, you know, if you had a nice fresh fish, you know, this not, might not be the best use of it. You know, since mackerel isn't a prized fish, you know, going in a stew is a good thing for a mackerel. Are you going to... We will freeze in time and uh, pick it up after this goes on. So we'll see what happens. No, you gotta stay on me, I'm frozen in time. Oh. Let me unfreeze. So now we're back and we're gonna throw the last little thing in here, our lemon juice, boom, 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 and our lemon zest. And you know what I was saying about the zester and blah, blah, blah? You don't have to use the zest. You know, I just feel like I'm using all parts of the animal, if I do. But, no necessito. But if you've got a zester, why not? Look, look how perfecto that is. And that didn't take any time. Now this is going to taste fantastic right off the stove. You know, if we ate this in the next 20 minutes, I mean, this, this stew has so much flavor right out of the gate. It's really surprising. So, you know, if you want to take a chance on canned mackerel stew, give it a go. I think you will be super duper pleasantly surprised. Forgot to put in a little bit of parsley. After I talked about how important it is to put some parsley in there, I forgot. So let's see. Personal boom, boom, preference. boom. 
Okay, your mom's coming through the door. Let me see if I can do this as quick as I can. Boom, boom, boom. Because a little bit of green makes a, uh, a big difference with this dish. That's what it's supposed to look like. That little bit of green makes a big difference. Like I said, you know, use some uh, green onion, use a little bit of spinach, but without that splash of green, it looks, it just doesn't look very exciting. But just that hint of color oh, now makes it's all exciting. the difference in the world. Now it's a thriller. <laughs> yeah, that's it. This is like a uh, John Ludlum novel. Is it John Ludlum? It's not John Ludlum. It's Robert Ludlum, right? Yeah. Gosh. I couldn't say it until you said it. I was like, oh, what's his first name? Yeah, that's it. Nobody, people don't read anymore. They're not going to get that reference. You said Let me Dusty you. Rose earlier. That's true. <laughs> okay. So there you have it. A home-cooked meal. Doesn't take much time at all. You know, if you look at the uh, timestamp down below, that's about how long it's going to take you. Uh, to make this dish. If you have four cups of coffee and run around the house like a knucklehead, you can do it that fast. Or you can just be zen and do it that fast. And yeah, people aren't going to know how delicious this stew is unless they try it. Because people are skeptical when it comes to canned mackerel. People are so skeptical. And they should be, maybe. Let me do it. talking about it's great nutrition, too. I only burned half of my tongue. What a goober. But, yeah, that's if you do it just like that, you're going to be thrilled. You're gonna, it's going to be like, um, you know, it's like the day your first child is born or what? the day you get your first big promotion. You know, the day you make your first canned mackerel stew. I mean, I mean you're never going to forget that day. That's it. You know, if you want to print the recipe, I'll have a link down below. You can go over to myfoodchannel.com, print out all our recipes over there. The Slow recipe, down, boy. The recipe that I have over there won't be this exact recipe, but just follow that recipe or kind of close to that recipe, and you'll be all right.